Welcome to our lecture online. Over the many years of studying signs, I always come across these things that, wow, if it wasn't for that, we wouldn't even exist or we wouldn't be able to survive on the earth. And this is one of those things. It turns out if it wasn't for this fact here, what's happening in the atmosphere, the earth simply would be a big snowball and our survival on the earth would be very tenuous at best. So what am I talking about? What is this? Well, as we saw in the previous videos, we saw that there are molecules in the atmosphere that act like a blanket around the atmosphere, giving us that greenhouse effect, keeping us nice and warm. And it's basically due to it being able, those molecules being able to absorb very specific frequencies based upon the vibrational and rotational modes. And especially because the rotational mode energy difference change from level to level so that the energy difference, even though they're quantized, the differences are not exactly the same, but they change, they increase or decrease depending upon which jumps, jumps we're talking about. But even then, there would only be very selected frequencies of radiation coming from the Earth's surface that would be able to be absorbed and the Earth would be very, very cold even with this structure like that. But what is so nice about what happens in addition to that, because without this, this couldn't happen, but one more thing needs to happen, and that thing is called spectrum broadening. There's two things that happen in the atmosphere that allow many more frequencies to be absorbed so that the Earth can be a lot warmer, comfortably the way it is today. One of those is called Doppler broadening. What happens is the molecules in the atmosphere, they move in different directions at various speeds. Of course, there's a, a kind of a, an average or RMS speed, but the fact that they move in different direction causes their, their radiation to be shifted. It's kind of like the red shift and blue shift. It's kind of like the Doppler shift with sound when they're moving away from us. The radiation coming towards us will be red-shifted, longer wavelengths, and when the molecules move towards us, the radiation will be blue-shifted, shorter wavelengths, which causes each of those spectral lines to widen just a little bit. And because of that, it can absorb a little bit more energy. But it turns out in the lower atmosphere, in the troposphere, this effect is fairly minimal because the velocity of the molecules is much, much smaller than the speed of light, and of course the radiation moves at the speed of light. There's a small effect. We can calculate the change in the wavelength using this equation, the speed of light divided by the velocity of the molecules times whatever frequency or wavelength the molecules we're moving at. In this case, we're going to use the wavelength. And so in the lower atmosphere, in the lower troposphere, it's not much of an effect. It's a little bit. It widens the line just a little bit so it can absorb a little bit more energy, but it still wouldn't be enough. In the upper atmosphere, in the ionosphere, where the molecules move at very high speeds, there's more of an effect there, but that's not where it's going to help us keep warm. So finally, there's one more thing that happens. When the atmosphere is thick enough, and on the Earth, the atmosphere is fairly thick near the, near the Earth's surface, the atmospheric pressure, one atmosphere, is about one bar, about a thousand millibars, and because of that, the molecules are so close together that they end up bumping into each other quite often. It turns out they collide with each other well over a billion times every second. And those frequent collisions messes up the vibrational modes a little bit. So instead of having these very nice vibrational modes, all these collisions cause the molecules to kind of change their vibrational modes a little bit. It's kind of like having a child on a swing, swinging back and forth really nice, but if you every once in a while at random kind of give the child a push, not at the right moment, the child is going to start bumping around and bouncing around and that nice smooth motion is going to be interrupted. The molecules in the atmosphere are exactly the same. All this bumping around causes that frequency to kind of move and change a little bit. And so what happens then to these lines is instead of being very nice and defined, they begin to smear in such a way that all of these frequencies in between as, as well as these specific ones, all of these frequencies get absorbed. And so instead of having just a very few select frequencies being absorbed, we get all these frequencies absorbed, all these wavelengths of radiation in such a way that that one vibrational mode with this one quantum jump in energy can actually absorb radiation all the way from 16 micrometers down to 14 micrometers. And this is in the case where we talk about carbon dioxide in the bending vibrational mode where the central peak occurs at 667 waves per centimeter, which is roughly the, the infrared frequency with a wavelength of about 15 micrometers. 
but instead of only absorbing this particular wavelength and those specific wavelengths, it absorbs all of these wavelengths between 16 and 14 micrometers approximately. And because of that, that is why we can stay on this Earth nice and comfortably warm. If it wasn't for this, the Earth would be many, many degrees cooler. The average temperature would probably be well below zero degrees centigrade instead of the nice, comfortable 15 degrees centigrade on average across the world. So that is what keeps us warm in the atmosphere. The specific properties of the quantum mechanic jumps in the energy levels and then the wide broadening of those energy levels through all those multitude of collisions. If the atmosphere was only one tenth as thick as it is now, we wouldn't have that effect. This would be very much thinner lines and it would be much, much colder in the Earth to the point where I don't know if we could even survive here or not. So we really have our lives and our, our survival to thank on the fact that we have these very specific methodologies in which these molecules absorb energy and then this enormous broadening effect from all these multitude of collisions of the molecules in the atmosphere causing those slight vibrational wiggles in that vibrational energy of those molecules. And that is why we live comfortably warm on this world.